Hello world, Tom Tinker DIY here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at chargers to charge the 18650 batteries that are going into our portable mini power wall project. And of course, you can use these charger for any size project that's using the 18650 size batteries. Um, but um, these are three chargers that I have on hand. Um, one of which I've had for uh, a few years now when I was big into the RC stuff. Uh, which was this IMAX B6 and this charger was commonly used um, for charging light lithium polymer batteries um, and these lithium ion 18650 batteries have a very similar charging characteristic as far as their upper and lower boundaries for voltage and the curve in which they get uh, charged at with the, how much uh, amperage gets forced into them to charge up those cells so um, you can use the lithium polymer chargers that you would get from uh, any of the RC shops or Amazon or any other places of course like that um, and this is one that I used for years and um, this particular unit is a 50 watt charger uh, which means it will put out a total of 50 watts of power um, so depending on how many cells that you're plugging in and you can do uh, one cell directly connected to the ground and positive leads here or you can go all the way up to a six cell battery uh, by plugging into the different connectors here depending on however many cells are into that battery pack uh, again lithium polymers 3s and 4s is very common for rc airplanes um, but it's not uncommon to also see on some of the really big applications where they'll go up to a 6s unit uh, so this was a really good charger and I still use this charger quite a bit because it just works well and has uh, low power requirements. Um, this one does not have its own uh, built-in power supply so it has an external power supply that uh, has to supply between 11 and 18 volts and of course you want to match the power supply uh, its wattage to the wattage of the charger that you're using so this was a 50 watt charger I have a 50 watt uh, power supply that goes with this and uh, I was using this charger quite a bit to help charge all of these cells with that battery pack back there that I'll show you guys uh, in more detail in, in a few minutes here um, so this charger is really nice to use again it's relatively cheap um, you can charge you can discharge and and uh, measure the milliamp hour of capacity while you're discharging and then you can also set the batteries to a storage voltage if they intend to sit idle for a long period of time and storage voltage is about 3.8 volts per cell um, so this is a nice charger and then um, for the really big project that's going to come after this project, which is still a portable powerwall project, but it's not exactly mini, uh, I picked up this 500 watt charger from ISDT. Um, and this charger will put out much more current intended to charge larger battery packs much faster. And um, as you can see here, it will still charge 2 to 6S battery cells this is still a charger meant for lithium polymer batteries that's commonly used in the RC industry uh, and this one's kind of nice because it just uses the XT60 connectors just directly on it for DC power again it does not have its own built-in power supply so in order to feed this guy especially 500 watts of power um, I have also picked up this very large uh, power supply <laughs> that feeds um, that charger. This is a 24 volt output. It will put out um, 500 watts of power as you can see there and um, this one you do have to do your own wiring where you wire it up to your uh, AC mains and then it has three parallel um, DC outputs and so I just made up a, a quick little pigtail with some uh, uh, nylon mesh here and I kind of messed up here on the end and I have to I guess go back and redo that at some point um, but this has just been used here on my on my bench here for charging batteries um, so this charger again is intended for um, charging the much higher uh, capacity packs uh, and uh, when I go to build that bigger portable system it's actually going to be running in a 6s configuration uh, so this is perfect for that so I can make sure that I am balanced charging all of the cells in that 6s pack and even when I go to put this pack together I'm still going to wire it up with a 3s balance configuration 
so that when this pack is either plugged into this to slow charge to slowly charge or if it's plugged into the to, to this unit here to charge maybe a little bit quicker uh, then I can make sure that each of the banks of cells uh, are staying evenly charged uh, as they come up to full voltage so uh, balanced chargers these are great and again these are um, commonly used lithium polymer chargers used in the RC industry and these are really nice to use for for charging up these these units um, when you're not running any kind of renewable resource um, like solar or you know wind turbines or whatever uh, sources of of non-grid power that you may need um, but that's what these are for is for you know using on grid um, and then I also got picked up one of these uh, Opus chargers, which after watching many videos on YouTube um, and some of the, the, the prominent guys who are doing these Powerwall projects, um, they have many of these units because these are nice where you can just take one cell, slide it into each channel here, and each channel runs independently of each other. Um, you can you can have the charger doing different things on each on each bank. Uh, you can have this one charging. You can have this one going to storage voltage, or you can have this one uh, going through its capacity testing. Uh, however you want to do it, you can set each one individually by using the buttons down here, and it's relatively intuitive to do it. Um, so this charger, of course, will charge the cells to 4.2 volts. Uh, it will run a capacity test, which will uh, take each cell, run it up to full charge, let it sit there for a little, a short period of time, um, and then it will deplete it down to three volts flat uh, and measure its capacity uh, as it was doing that. And then when it's done, it'll go ahead and just recharge that battery to full for you so that the entire cycle um, it actually takes a little while. So this unit will only charge up to one amp uh, per, per, per channel here. Um, which on these cells, a lot of them are 2200 milliamp hours, which means it takes probably two and a half hours to charge these cells if they're flat. Uh, so imagine that you have to go through and uh, charge them from storage voltage to full charge, and that probably takes about an hour, hour and a half. Then it takes two and a half hours to discharge because the discharge rate on this unit is only one amp per channel. Um, so that takes two and a half hours to discharge and then it takes another two and a half hours to recharge again So to run the entire cycle uh, for testing the batteries with this charger um, It's you know, it takes upwards of gosh What is that seven eight hours to, to you know run a full cycle? So it's definitely not a fast process uh, now these RC chargers here um, they can discharge and they will measure capacity, but they will only do it one battery cell at a time. Um, so if you have a lot of them to test, this is definitely probably the way to go. Um, and with these units, they will still only discharge at a rate of one amp, um, at a one amp rate, uh, just because of heat management. You're, you're, when you're discharging it, you're basically just letting off the power as heat and then you're measuring the amount of uh, power that's consumed a milli milliamp hour. So, um, you know, you can choose however you want to do this. And so when I got to a point where uh, I did not capacity test every single one of these cells, I capacity tested eight of the 40 eBay cells that came from those 36 volt eBay packs, and they all tested out very consistently. And I was confident that all those cells were pretty well matched to each other. So to, to just get through and get all of these cells charged at full charge, I put together one of these units here. And what these are is uh, an individual, six individual 18650 battery holders. Uh, and if you can see here, I actually went in and cut off a lot of the tabs here because these cells holders are actually really hard to get the batteries in and out of. They're not meant to just be swapping batteries in and out of. They're meant to just go into a project, hold the battery, and rarely need, need to have that battery taken in and out. So that doesn't exactly work for, you know, if you're trying to charge something. Um, so I went in and I, and I trimmed off a lot of these tabs. So the battery cells are, will go in there and be held securely enough for charging purposes. Um, but, you know, it, it's real finicky. I'm not real happy with the way that this unit works. And, um, 
you know, I, I may look at trying to rebuild this pack with a better holder system. But the idea behind this whole pack is what you see here is that this is a 6S balance lead. So I can put six batteries in here and charge them six at a time. And regardless of their state of charge, however many volts that they have, um, by using this balance lead on either the IMAX B6 or this ISDT SC620, um, it will, these two chargers will make sure that each cell is charged uh, up to 4.2 volts individually and make sure that no one cell gets overcharged. So this helped quite a bit to be able to uh, just get through all the cells and charge them a lot faster because with these units I can charge faster than one amp um, at a one amp rate. Again this Opus is limited to a one amp rate um, with this uh, IMAX B6 I think I was limited to somewhere around um, 3 amps because it's only a 50 watt charger uh, and this unit will go much higher. Um, my ideal goal though was to just charge this at 1C um, and that's uh, depending on the C rating of the battery or the, the milliamp hour rating of the battery uh, because most of these again were 2200 milliamp hour you can assume that 1C is 2.2 amp hour. So I set each of these, uh, and I tried using both to, as I worked through it using just this one pack, so I used only one at a time. Um, so I set these to 2.2 amps uh, a charge rate, so which means I was able to charge all of these cells in about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, much faster than the two and a half hours that this Opus charger takes. And again, I would be able to do that six at a time. So in the time that this thing would go through four cells, I could push through 12 cells at minimum, maybe even upwards of, 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 of what is that, 18 cells. Uh, and the time that it takes for these chargers to charge at 2.2 amps or 1C, as it took for this Opus to run at one amp, which is... Uh, a little under half a C. So this is a look at the chargers that I'm using and I, I use each one for a little bit different purpose. The uh, All of these cells are now fully charged and in the next video we're going to take a look at how I'm going to do the bus bars on it uh, and once we get it all wired up we will hook it up to the converter over there uh, or the inverter excuse me uh, we'll use the inverter and we'll start doing some minor testing just to see you know how is it working? How is it, you know, responding? Are we running into any issues with um, voltage droop on these cells that once they go under load, um, is the voltage drooping too much, which is causing the inverter to go into alarm state saying, hey, the batteries are getting low. They're not too low yet, but there is an audible alarm in that inverter. And then, of course, if it gets too low, uh, 3.3 volts or a total voltage output of 10 volts, then the inverter just shuts off. So I'm going to try to just, before I get put this entire project together and call it done, I am going to be running some tests just to kind of get a general feel of how the system works. And you never know, I might determine that I'm not satisfied with the performance of the system and I might be forced to, to change the configuration of the battery pack a bit. So like I said, in the next video, we're going to take a look at putting the bus bars to, uh, on this battery pack together and getting it all wired up. Uh, and I say bus bars loosely because I'm not actually going to be using um, copper bars to do it. So and you'll see what I'll be doing there in the next video. So thank you for watching. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. I love your guys' engagements. Also, make sure that you check out the video description. Um, and I've got many links with my Amazon affiliates, which shows um, each of these chargers that you can get on Amazon. Um, and if you purchase any of the products uh, that you see here through those links, um, it helps to support the channel, which will help to uh, buy new products and support new projects going forward. So I do appreciate your guys' support, and I'll see you in the next video.